Hi there. This video is all about electrical power. The equations in the relationship sheet which allows to calculate power and how it can be found experimentally. I'll be using two experimental setups and this is the first. Here I have three lamps, one with a power rating of 5 watts, the second with a power rating of 24 watts and the third 36 watts. Each lamp is connected to a joule meter which measures the energy transferred. Each joule meter is then connected to a power supply which is adjusted so that the voltage across each lamp is 12 volts. I'll switch on all three power supplies now and measure the energy transferred by each lamp in 100 seconds. That's 1 minute 40 seconds. So in the lamps, electrical energy is transferred into light and heat. We can already see that the lamp with the greatest power rating of 36 watts transfers more energy in a given time interval. As I said before, I've made sure that all three lamps have a voltage of 12 volts across them. This was measured with a voltmeter before recording the video. It's clear to see that as the power rating of the lamp increases, its brightness increases. In this experiment, all three lamps are filament lamps. With a current in the wire filament, it's heated to such a high temperature that it glows white hot. This type of lamp is very inefficient, as around 95% of the electrical energy is transferred to heat. If you want to know more about energy saving light bulbs and why they're more efficient, then take a look at this video on my Junior Science channel. Now, once 100 seconds is up, I'll calculate the power of each lamp using this equation. Power P is equal to energy E divided by time T. Power is in watts, energy in joules, and time in seconds. You might expect that the calculated values will be 5, 24, and 36 watts, but that probably won't be the case. The calculated values will depend on the accuracy of the measuring devices, the stop clock, voltmeter, and joule meter. Also, there will be some variation in the power of similar lamps with the same power rating due to slight differences in the thickness and length of the filament and so on. If you watch the stop clock, you'll see that I switch off the power supplies at 1 minute 40. You'll also see that the 36 watt lamp glows for a fraction of a second longer. This is because of its higher temperature. Using the equation then, the first lamp actually has a power of 438 divided by 100, which is 4.38 watts. The second lamp has a power of 2478 divided by 100, which is 24.78, or 24.8 watts to three significant figures. And the third has a power of 4055 divided by 100, which is 40.55, or 40.6 watts to three significant figures. If you're ever asked for the definition of power, then this first equation is the one which should help you to remember. The unit for time is seconds, so power is the energy transferred per second. If you want help remembering your definitions, then you can download this file from my website. Just follow the link at the end of this video. Now we'll get on with the second experiment, where we'll learn the other three equations for electrical power. You'll see I'm using a lamp with a power rating of 48 watts this time. I'm going to place the lamp into an electrical circuit, then measure the current in the lamp and the voltage across it. Here I'm connecting the power supply to the ammeter, the ammeter to the lamp, and then the lamp back to the power supply. Since I'm measuring the current in the lamp, the ammeter must be placed in series with it. Next I'll connect the voltmeter across the lamp. So to measure the voltage across the lamp, the voltmeter must be placed in parallel with it. See the circuit diagram at the bottom of the screen if you're unsure. As I said before, and you can see this on the screen, the power rating of the lamp is 48 watts. Although for this lamp, this is only the case when the voltage across it is 12 volts. I'll turn the dial on the variable power supply until we get 12 volts displayed in the voltmeter. It's amazing how long some pupils can spend adjusting the power supply until the voltage is just right. For the purposes of this video, I've done this as quickly as I can, and you'll see that the voltage does fluctuate slightly when I place the voltmeter back down. So now that we have the required voltage of 12 volts across the lamp, we can measure the current in the lamp using the ammeter. I'm going to take the reading of current as 4.17 amps, although you can see that this value fluctuates a little too. We can then calculate the power of the lamp using our second equation, P is equal to IV, where P is power in watts, I is current in amps, and V is voltage in volts. Using the values measured, this gives us 4.17 multiplied by 12 is equal to 50.04 watts. Since current was measured to three significant figures, we should write this value to three significant figures also. So calculated power of the lamp is 50.0 watts. As I said earlier, there's a variety of reasons why the calculated power of the lamp isn't exactly equal to its power rating. 
The last two equations for electrical power require us to calculate the resistance of the lamp. This can be done using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. If we divide both sides by current I, we get resistance R equals voltage V divided by current I. Substituting into this equation, we get a resistance of 12 divided by 4.17, which equals 2.88 ohms. Here's the third equation for electrical power. P is equal to I squared R. By now, you'll know what quantities the letters signify. So the power of the lamp is equal to 4.17 squared multiplied by 2.88, which equals 50.1 watts to three significant figures. There's a slight difference from our previous answer due to rounding the value for resistance. Finally, this is the last equation. P is equal to V squared divided by R. Substituting into this equation, we get 12 squared divided by 2.88, which is 50.0 watts. No great surprise there. The tricky bit when using these equations is working out which equation to use when, and also how to rearrange them when power P isn't what you're calculating, as it was throughout this video. With that in mind, I'll start work on a video of worked examples. Look out for it when it comes out. For now though, that's us. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and so on, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.